This is determining the rate law for the crystal vial hydroxide ion reaction from the General Chemistry Lab Manual. So kinetics refers to the reaction rate, and so we can express that as a mathematical expression where we describe a change in concentration of the species in solution. It could be a reactant, it could be a product, whatever. In this case, we'll talk about a reactant, let's say in a reaction with A, um, and it disappears over a period of time. Okay, so this is a disappearance in the concentration of A over time, and the reaction then, the reaction rate uh, equation then, has two components. One is rate constants, little k, um, and it gives an overall information about the speed of the reaction. And the other is the order of the reactant. So various uh, species then have uh, an effect on the rate, and if you increase or the concentration of something, it may increase the rate or it may not. And so we express that in terms of the order of the reactant, which is an exponent. Okay, and so we call this the order, and so you can have zero order where it has no effect, first order, second order, you can have a lot of different kinds of order. Now, the thing about kinetics is that, <clears throat> to be quite honest, you can't, unless you know a lot about the reaction, you cannot determine this uh, theoretically. You have to determine experimentally. So that's what we're going to do today for a particular reaction. Now, there are a couple ways of getting order and the rate law from uh, the data. Okay, so we're going to generate some data. And one is what we call the initial rate method, where we do the we compare the rates, uh, we measure the rates of the reaction at two different concentrations of a particular uh, reactant, and then you look to see if you know what the change in the rate is based on the change in the concentration, and that'll allow you to solve for the order of the reactant, and then you should be able to go in and actually repeat uh, uh, plug those back in then to determine k. Now we're going to be doing this really is our second exercise uh, in doing this. We will do this part calculation uh, uh, kind of after we do the next method. And that method will be the integrated rate law. So you may not have gotten this to a lecture, but you can take the rate law and you could just do some uh, calculus kung fu. And depending on the order of the reactant, you can get different linear equations. So one is uh, zero order. And so here are the different uh, integrated rate laws. And what that allows you to do is allows you to plot your data, use a little manipulation on the on your uh, uh, change in your concentration uh, versus time, and then that will allow you then to plot it in different directions. So you can either plot, you know, as you can see, there are three different options here. There's for zero order, it's just co changing concentration over time. Uh, for first order, it's an actual log of that over time, and then for second order, it's one over the uh, concentration of that over time. So if you do that. You, and whichever reaction, whichever order this reactant fits, uh, you'll see a nice straight line. And so the line then will have a slope that will be equal to either the, to some, either a positive or negative version of the rate law. Okay, so this is a really useful technique for getting, taking experimental data and trying to figure out the order. So we're going to be doing this process first, then we'll be comparing uh, the integrated rate law, uh, uh, the rate from the integrated rate law analysis uh, using and treat that as an initial rate at two different concentrations then to do the second part of the analysis. So the lab is pretty straightforward. We're going to have a compound crystal violet, it's nice and purple, and if you react that with sodium hydroxide over time it decolorizes. So we're going to be able to use our spectrophotometer to look at the color change over time. So we're going to collect absorbance data at two different sodium hydroxide concentrations at 595 nanometers for about 10 minutes. And we'll be able to do this with the Logger Pro software. And then we'll be able to use that data, do the integrated rate law to get the order of it for crystal violet, and then do the initial rate method at two different sodium hydroxide concentrations to get the order of sodium hydroxide. In terms of our general chemistry lab objectives, this is really a quantitative analysis lab for kinetics. You are going to get to use the UV spectrophotometer, um, and you'll also be required to do a good bit of uh, quantitative analysis for this lab. But a lot of it's on spreadsheets, so it's pretty easy. Now, the lab manual goes into a lot of detail about different methods to do this and all that. Uh, we can just our, we have a very nice set of spectrophotometers for students, so we can just set this up. We will use Logger Pro, so if you want to bring in your laptop, at least one of your partners, or foursomes in this case, bring in your laptop, then we can have, you can have the data and you can email it to all your uh, partners. And so we will want to collect, we're going to collect about 10 minutes of data. And so we want to do this about every 10 seconds, 5 to 10 seconds will give us a nice data set. So we'll set Logger Pro up and I'll help you set that up. 
and then we'll have a spreadsheet we'll have you know you can set it up yourself to basically figure out which uh, order this reaction fits best in terms of the various integrated rate laws okay now the one challenge we have is that we don't we won't exactly know the concentration of crystal violet uh, because of the way our indicator is was purchased um, so we're going to go more with a color and so we want one drop of indicator per about 100 mils of di water and that will get us in the right ballpark you want an absorbance range that's you know between one and you know point five or so to start out with and then that will decrease over time as you add the sodium hydroxide so because we don't have a, a an infinite number of spectrophotometers you are going to work in groups of four today and from a safety point of view i mean the indicator is pretty purple and it will stain your clothes and we're also dealing with some low concentrations of sodium hydroxide so you know you mainly just don't want to get it on you because of the stain i think that's a bigger Okay, so by the end of the lab, you'll have um, two sets of kinetic data um, at two different sodium hydroxide concentrations. Um, and then you're going to analyze it. We'll, I'll do a post-lab video here where I'll walk you through the calculations to do the analyzing the fit for the integrated rate law. Excel is extremely easy at doing this once you have the data. Um, you can then compare. That'll get you the order of crystal violet. Then you'll compare the two rates um, at the two different runs, and that'll allow you to determine the order of sodium hydroxide. Uh, everything today can just go down the sink, uh, and it should be pretty straightforward. So the key in this lab is sort of the analysis part to show you sort of re what real kinetics looks like.